Hi, welcome to the Low Polygon segment. Okay, so we're going to start basically by deleting these bits because we're going to be working with mirrors of these later on. Um, the gun, actually two guns, they look different. Machine guns on both on this one and machine gun and rocket launch on the other one, but not to worry. Anyway, straight to work. Uh, got the foot here. We're going to make a new group. We're going to call it foot, so rename high p foot just let me know what it is, I'm going to hide everything else zoom in on it and got the toe here so just going to select it and click grow ok that should give us just about everything we need I think uh, ok so I'm going to detach this as toe and I'm going to isolate it and I'm going to delete it in a minute as well because really we don't need it um, I'm going to build my toe completely independently of this but this is going to act as our kind of rough template okay so object properties uh, I'm going to make it see through right now I'm going to build a box turn off auto grid and this is going to become my new toe like so and like I said before the scaffolding only really kind of is around an object this is just a scaffolding model convert to edible poly and I have to pull it to a more accurate representation of what the toe looks like now so Now then, it should come out at the sides here. So I'm going to just select this edge and scale it like that. Um, the in part there is going to stay at that width because I've actually got it a little bit wide, maybe just a tiny bit wider, but not much. Okay, that's fine. Now I'm going to delete the old one. And as we see, our new box will now become my toe. which I'll call high poly toe on the front. Okay, so with the high polygon toe sitting here on the front, what I'm going to do is start working my detail in. Isolate it again. And I've got to have some level of curve coming out around the outside, so I'm going to click here and do a ring and then a connect. Just one. There we are. This will allow me to pull this one here and here a little bit wide. Now I've got these in local so I'm going to change these to view again. Not too much. There we are. That should be about enough. Now I need to go straight down through the middle here as well. Do another connect and just make sure that we're kind of keeping the shape of the curve that I want, which we are go straight down the middle now and do it again okay so we've got quite a bit of shape here coming in now I'm going to do a chamfer on the underside here to create the kind of underside of the foot that we need so just a simple chamfer for that and I think about 0.25 sorry 0.025 should suffice and then what I'm going to do is just select this one Got to be careful, I'm just selecting the correct edges here. Now, even though it's just a toe, we're going to be using quite a lot of different tricks on this. So, first, what I'm going to do is just this kind of simple inward chamfer, and then I'm going to repeat it, but I'm going to do it manually just because I want to curve it in like so. Okay, it's a very minor thing, but it brings the foot in underneath. Okay, now. The next thing I need to do is start work on these sides, which need to be chamfered as well. So I'm going to select both these and this. Uh, if we loop, it'll go down there. Make sure it hasn't looped any further than we need it to. 
hasn't. Excellent. You see, it wouldn't loop on our low poly scaffolding model because it isn't really designed for that sort of thing. Okay, now I'm going to chamfer both manually just so that I can get it kind of to the level I want. And again, I'm just going to use the slider to get the minutiae. There we are. Okay, and that's rounded the edges nicely. Now then, I'm looking at this at the front, just here, and I'm thinking that possibly it could do with just coming in at the top a little bit more. So I'm going to use an FFD, just a 2x2x2. Two by two by two. Just select all the top here, and just scale it in just a little bit. There. Not massive. And I'm going to do the same just over here, just to keep everything in line. Keep the bulge. Now that's in a little bit too much, so let's just round it a tiny bit. There we are. And it gives us a much more friendly shape if we do that as well. OK, what I'm going to do now is just bring this up just a tiny bit. It's all about shapes. Very, very ergonomic. I was reading the design reports for Ed 209. Very, very clever the way they built it. OK, and I'm going to chamfer this. And again, just to maintain a slight rounding there. Next, select this one, loop it, and again, just a chamfer. OK, and that really rounds out the front. I don't want to round it too much, actually. I'm just looking at the uh, base model here. And I think this could do with being sunk just a little bit more. So there, that's better. OK, I'll do a slightly smaller chamfer now. I'll do it using the manual tool, just to make sure I get it right. OK, there we go. And that gives us that shape there. OK, just pull back and have a look. It seems like a lot of work to go to just to get our toe shape correct, but honestly this work's going to pay off dividends in the long run. OK, now over here, we've got our four polygons, which are going to make kind of inside of our toe. And we've got this rounded piece here, so what I'm going to do is inset. Now we've got to be very careful here because you can see these just up here, yeah? So what I'm going to do is pull in a bevel because we do want to keep these and I think that should do it, because we don't want to go any further in than this. We're not actually going into the mechanics of the object. OK, now we have some placement of objects onto this, for which I'm going to need my placement script. So, what I can do for that is uh, just pull out, first of all, a plane, just so I can see what I'm building on. Now this is um, somewhat more of a complicated placement object than you're used to if you're just used to doing the old standard nuts and bolts. This is kind of a sunken bolt head that rides flush with the plastic. So um, we're going to take a bit more time doing this. So first of all, we're going to load up our placement tool script. If you've never used one before, um, you can find it on 3D Palace, which is here. And what I'm going to do is go down here and find placement tool. Now, if I just do a quick search, you'll see, here we are, there's a sticky at the top, well, there's a few, where to find the placement tool, and upgrade to the placement tool. And one of our members, bless his tiny socks, Hovercrafter here, actually built an update to the placement tool. So if we click this, we can open it. I'm just going to open mine with the edit pad. And here it is here. So if I do a control A, control C, just to select all of it, close that, and close that, max script, new script, paste it in here, and I'm going to save as, 
and I'll just save it to hmm, let me think yeah add 209 new folder scripts and inside this we'll do hover crafter placement tool there you go hover crafter I acknowledged you because it's a bloody good tool okay and what we can do now is go to max script run script if we go into our ed209 scripts folder there's hovercraft's placement tool and we'll keep it over here now it's called the paint hair floater it's a variation of the free script that came with 3d studio max but it's added slightly more control to it now what I'm going to do is I'm going to build our rivet pins so this is a cylinder job I'm not going to use auto grid because like I said I want them slightly flush and I'm going to get the size about right which looks like about that bring it down just a tiny bit convert to edible poly and now I can get rid of this okay and um, we're going to give this a name tool large inset um, well I suppose it's a rivet really isn't it well no it's a bolt mount okay just so we know what it is now if we zoom in on it at the minute uh, the level of detail on this is not that high actually I think before I name it I should have really increased its sides a bit there we go maybe 22 will be enough okay I'll delete this you'll notice this has still got its name even though I did a control Z on it which is cool convert edible poly now delete this top one everything gets inverted I'll just give it my soft selection there we go flip right and now what I'm going to do is basically build out these details so I'm just going to find a slightly better reference for myself okay I found one it's not the best example in the world I'm looking at I'll try and include as much reference imagery as I can I'm going to try and actually buy a couple of Ed 209 physical models and take lots of photographs of them but it depends really right anyway back to this so a bevel in remember what I said about having a small model beveling goes all over the place so we'll do manual beveling makes things a little bit more of a challenge but it's fun now if we're going to use normal mapping incidentally we can't have too many straight on direct angles this is probably something I should explain here uh, here's my drawing tool yeah now imagine if you will that this is our details that we're doing yeah now when 3ds max casts its normal ray making magic it's calculating all these different areas here for your heights on your normal map now in simplistic terms these straight edges here ain't going to calculate well as normal maps you need to make graduated slopes as much as possible okay even if it's just a minor graduated slope and the more curves the better that's why you have such organic looking uh, normal mapped models so let's turn that off and let's stop the dull lecture before you all fall asleep so I'm going to bring this up to about here like that click apply now I'll bring this down a bit bring this outline in really ascertained how this would be useful but nonetheless this is kind of the detail object that seems to be all over Ed 209 so there we go that is our inverted detail area okay now we don't want to mess around with our pivot on this because if we do then our model is not going to lie correctly against the surface of this yeah we can also have to remove some rivets in order for it to fit but don't worry about that we'll get to it so first things first I'm going to isolate this again and I really need to add this to the tool folder K 
OK. I'm just looking over my model. I've just got to find the place. So many reference images, you wouldn't believe. There we are. Right, so the places where I'm going to be putting this are here, 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 and on the other side of the foot, if anything's to go by, it'll be here, and here again. Before I do, like I said, I want to set up this, which is the layer tool. And here I'm going to rename it Tools, because this means I can hide the tools when I'm not using them. It's important, I just, you know, need this one. There's going to be a lot of duplicates appearing. OK, set selection as source. I'm going to pick my distribution object 1, here it is. OK, now I can use the placement tool to place on it however much I want. I'm going to place this one there, this one there. Makes a massive difference doing this. This one here, and this one here. Slip around this side, put one here, and again I'm going to put this one here. And these are all just, I think I'll move that a bit more to the edge. These are put in place basically as maker's marks. This gives us the idea of how it's put together, even though it wasn't necessarily put together that way. OK, next. I'm going to minimise my hair floating tool. Have I still got this turned on? I probably have. No, I haven't. But I have locked it. There we are. Always keep an eye out for that little lock marker there. Next. Uh, layers tool. I'm going to hide off my tools so I don't accidentally delete them. Now, if you look, all of these have been created in the tools area, unfortunately for me. So, let's do a quick grab like this, like this. And I can allocate them all to here, and then I can hide this one. There. Right, next, I'm going to attach all these to it. Okay, now obviously that's not looking too fantastically impressive yet, but don't worry. Next, let's get rid of this. And we're going to attach here to here. Do a quick bridge. And then we can cap. Big difference, as you can see. Now if we go over here, same again. Doesn't matter that it's a massive polygon. We can only do this though when we're sure we've obtained the shape that we need. Otherwise we're going to have big problems later on. What I mean is you can't do this near the beginning of the model and then assign you know, a load of shapes on top of this because if you start bending it these ain't going to bend that well. Don't worry though, you'll see what I mean first time you try and do it. Another thing you could do obviously is put a load of cylinders using auto grid and then draw in the detail on all of them simultaneously however that is such a pain in the ass. And bridge that, or cap that, cap that, there we are. And here, no one said it was never going to be a lot of work. But if you do it and finish this model, at least you can tell people you got the skills. Even though I'm probably really cheapening the whole kind of Ed 209 market really badly at the moment. Okay, give it to this one. Got to be careful here, I don't want any intersections, so I'm going to zoom in and have a look. Because this piece could be just a tiny bit too close. Ooh, that is close, but I think it's not quite close enough. Although, hmm, you know what? In this instance, because it's so close, I'm actually going to use a target weld. I wouldn't usually, but I'm going to. Now, that edge there is going to look wrong when someone actually looks at it close up, so I've got to be... Hmm, I think I'll just use two caps on this one. 
I really don't want to screw the model up. So bridge. Then I'm going to cap this tiny area here. Which if you look has gone all the way around it. Pretty much anyway. There we are. Okay, now press F4 and you can see that we've got all our shapes flush. I can't see any broken polygons. You can normally see where Max is having a bit of a dicky fit. So that looks fine. Now over here we have a piece I need to build which is just a small kind of foot stamp area. I'm just going to quickly flick through my myriad references. Not all the references are the same, which is typical incidentally with the references. I mean I've got some really quite old ones here. Right, here we are. Now, my guess is, and I know that this was designed incredibly cleverly, and my hat is firmly off to the people who did this. However, my guess is, with this piece, that this is where they put individual an ind what they would have classed as an individual builder's mark. The psychology of the way they built Ed 209 and the pure ergonomic design factor of it is staggering. I absolutely love it to bits. Right, here's my plane for doing slice plane. And I'm just going to turn it on its side. 90 degrees, there we are. Now I can use this to exactly cut there. Oh, wrong one. I want to use quick slice, didn't I? Slice plane, I mean, sorry. Click slice. I wonder why it vanished. I was like, ooh. And there. I've done it again. Okay, turn that off. And you can see now, there it is. Nice and straight. Now in here. Just be careful how I do this one as well. Select this, zoom in on it, and I'm going to use the slice plane tool again. Okay, and just click slice. And does it come all the way at the middle? No, not quite. So there you go, about there. So, take this piece now, and I'm just going to countersink it in. So, a quick bevel. Remember, I just want to use a minor amount coming in there, just a really minor. In fact, I'm going to do the bevel manually. That way, it's not straight down. round these out all simultaneously there we are like so okay now use the chamfer tool on it be careful just to set a very minor chamfer now if you look this top here is not really chamfering very much at all compared to the sides. Let's just use the most minor of chamfers on it. There we are. You notice I haven't used edge checks at all yet. I'm sure it'll come. I'm just not using it yet. Okay, so that's a lot of effort to go to for one toe. However, it's allowing you, I think, to kind of see the workflow I have planned. Now I'm going to stick a smooth on that. Just auto smooth it. Give it a threshold of about 23.5, maybe. Doesn't look too bad. There's a minor crease there, but nothing I'm going to lose any sleep about. Okay, exit isolation mode. There, and you can see now how it fits in with the rest of the piece. I'm just going to apply a basic material to it if it's not already applied. There we go. OK, so in the next piece, we'll create our side toes, which are pretty similar to the front one when it comes down to it anyway. So till then, thanks for watching. See you in the next bit.